Next thing is, uh, what, do, what do we have? What is the condition that if I put a metal into a region of space where in this region there is no non-zero electric field. We have some electric fields, okay? Think about this question. In region of space, we have a non-zero electric field and into this region we put a, a metal. What happens? When we, you can put a, 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 a metal which has no charge, okay? Suppose you put a sphere, metallic sphere, which has no charge. As soon as you put this metal onto this region of space, would the electric field lines will be the same? The question. No, because if this is a metal, if this is a conductor, as I said, in conductor, there are free electrons moving inside. Right? Well, they are moving, but the net charge is not changing. The net charge is zero. Well, if you put these electrons inside an electric field, when they experience this electric field, they will see a force on them, right? Because whenever you put a charged particle on an electric field, then there will be a force, electrostatic force on that charge, which is in the direction of electric field if it is a positive charge, opposite to the direction of the electric field if it is a negative charge. So as soon as you put this metal uh, the sum of the electrons, right, will be uh, accumulated on the left hand side, right, because electrons when you put, they will be attracted to the left if the electric field is to the right. This is true. Well, if some of the electrons are going on the left hand side, then the net charge distribution is changed. In that case. Uh, some positive charges must be accumulated on the right hand side, right? So that the total charge must be equal to zero, right? So as soon as this configuration uh, is there, some of the charges on the left hand side and some of them on the right hand side, this is in fact, uh, which is called, what is this called, this phenomena is called the polarization. The charges, when they have uh, no an extra charge on it, the net charge is zero, but some of the charges, electrons, are moving in one side, and when they are moving in one side, since the protons will have no electrons at all around, in that case, on the other side will be plus charges. So this is a polarization, polarized. The metals is polarized. And then, uh, how, the next thing is how these electric field lines will change. You see, <coughs> some of these lines, electric field lines, enters to the metal perpendicularly, right? And But here, at some other places, the uh, electric field lines ends on the surface not perpendicularly, but it has some a tangential component, right? It has some tangential component to the surface. If you have this tangential component on the surface, then the charges on the surface will experience an electric force, electric field, right? But as I said, the, in electrostatic equilibrium, the charges cannot move because if charges are moving, then the uh, currents will be there on the surface to uh, prevent this happening, uh, the electric field line, which is coming not perpendicularly to the surface, will change its direction so that it is end up on the surface perpendicularly, right? Right, this distribution happens, the electric field lines will change their direction just around the metal so that all the field lines end on the surface perpendicularly. If you think otherwise, if the electric field lines do not end on the surface or emerge from the surface perpendicularly, then there will be current flow on the surface because there will be no, uh, there will be net electric field on the surface. This causes the electric forces and the electric forces will move the charges on the surface. So as soon as you put a chargeless metal 
inside the electric field. This is how the electric field lines deflect, bends, and also how the charges will distribute it over the surface. At some surface and some part of the surface, there will be net electric uh, uh, negative charges on right at the opposite net positive charges. But again, the sum of these charges is zero because initially you have put a chargeless, which neutral uh, metal, and this fact is still the case. But only thing is the charges are distributed not evenly for this case. If you put into the electric field, there will be some uh, uneven uh, distribution of the charges over the surface. Okay. Again, electric field is equal to zero. Okay. Rem I remind you that even outside the electric field is non-zero. Whenever you put a metal or a conductor inside an electric field, inside the conductor, the electric field is always zero. Whether it is charged or not, uh, whether it is in an, in an electric field or not, the electric field of a metal inside a metal is always, always zero. There is no exception. Okay? All right. So once you have, I will finish up quickly. Once you have these charges, uh, which is on the outer surface of a conductor, the next question is, what is the local electric field right on the surface? And the electric field, as you know, must always be perpendicular to the conductor. Now you see that there is another important property in electrostatic. For a metal, if you put a metal into a region of space where there is some non-zero electric field, the electric field lines must always end up on the surface perpendicularly. Okay? This is another statement of the electrostatics that you will face in your problems and in your exams. The electric field is always zero inside a conductor, and the electric field lines are always emerging or perpendicular, ending on the perpendicular to the surface of a conductor. Okay, so you can now uh, calculate if as long as you know the surface charge density on the surface of a metal, you can calculate the strength of the electric field right on the surface. There is a way to do that. Just pick up a Gaussian surface a pillbox, a rectangular Gaussian surface, right? And you can keep this site as long as, uh, uh, as, as small as you want, okay? This site length as small as you want, so that one top surface is located just outside the metal, and the bottom surface is just located inside the metal. So the next thing is you calculate the flux through this imaginary Gaussian pillbox. And if you say this is this has the area top surface as the area A, then it's very easy because the flux through this area is just electric field strength times A. But what about uh, the Gaussian law says the charge inside must be equal to uh, this flux, charge inside divided by epsilon zero. So the charge inside is just since this box it crosses the same area on the surface, the same A, because it's a rectangular surface, and the charge inside is just sigma times A, and this is divided by epsilon zero, this must be equal to the flux. So from this, you can easily get the electric field right outside the surface of a conductor is nothing but the sigma divided by epsilon zero. As long as you know the charge density of the surface of a metal, you can calculate the electric field strength right on the surface of the metal. Okay? And this is the case. And this is another nice way of using Gauss's law to calculate the electric fields. Well, inside, always you have electric field is zero. Okay? This is, again, the case.